Hi, I'm Mr. Simons and in this video I promise to try and write more neatly. I really do. It's just a bit tricky when you're writing on the tablet and, and looking at the screen and anyway, you don't need to know all the stories but what you do need to know is what we're talking about in the video today. How does the net primary income account affect the current account deficit? So what goes on with the NPY account will then affect the balance of the current account. And we're gonna look at how that takes place. Bit of a, a look at the cyclical and structural factors like we did for BOGS. If you haven't seen that video, uh, you could start with that looking at the card above. Okay, but without further ado, why don't we get started? One key factor that affects the CAD is the balance on the NPY account, which sits on the current account. And essentially what we're talking about in this video is this kind of relationship. When there is a change in NPY, there will be a change in the current account deficit. And the NPY changes, this stuff here, will be related to cyclical and structural factors. Now, let's just have a quick uh, discussion about cyclical versus structural before we move on. So cyclical are changes that are due to economic cycles, goes up, goes down, that has an effect. Structural factors are pretty consistent. They're due to the structure or the nature of an economy. So cyclical factors change when growth changes, structural factors stay pretty consistent. Okay, so here we are and we're looking at the cyclical factors that affect the value of NPY. So the first cyclical factor is the value of the Australian dollar. And what we're looking at is this kind of relationship. The value of the Australian dollar will affect the Australian dollar value of foreign debt because foreign debt is often denominated or kept track of in foreign currency terms because foreign investors, they don't really need Australian dollars. They want their own currency. So foreign debt is typically denominated, kept track of, recorded in foreign currency values. So what we can see then is this. If the Australian dollar appreciates, it will reduce the foreign denominated value of Australia's debt. So the Australian dollar is stronger, which means that the Australian dollar value of foreign debt will fall. And that if that happens, we're going to see this kind of effect. That if the Australian dollar is stronger, it will reduce the size of the Australian dollar outflows. So Australia will be paying less in interest repayments because the value of the foreign debt is less because the Australian dollar is stronger. So the relationship then is, if we get a stronger Australian dollar, there will be a smaller value of NPY outflows because the value of foreign debt in Australian dollar terms has fallen. And if the value of NPY outflows falls, okay, that's gonna reduce the value of the NPY deficit and then reduce the value of the CAD or improve the balance of the CAD. One thing before we move on, if you can come back and follow me to the top here, this idea that the change in the value of the Australian dollar affects the Australian dollar value of foreign debt is known as the valuation effect, okay? Now, this is an economic concept. It's not something I'm making up that when we talk about when the Australian dollar value changes, that will change the value of Australia's foreign debt in its local currency terms. That is the valuation effect. Whew. Let's move on. 
Okay, the next one we're talking about here are changes in domestic and global interest rates. Remember, this is still cyclical factors that affect NPY. So let's focus here on these global interest rates. What we're saying here is that AU, Australia, borrows funds at the value of global interest rates when we're talking about foreign debt. Because if Australians were borrowing money domestically, that's not foreign debt. But if they're borrowing money from overseas, okay, they're going to borrow that at the value of global interest rates. If there is an increase in the value of global interest rates, which Australians have borrowed at, that's going to increase the level or the value, level or value, I'm not crossing off level, of the interest repayments on those loans, on that foreign debt. And then if Australia has to pay a higher value of interest payments, If there's uh, more interest payments going overseas, so more money flowing out of Australia, that is going to increase the value of NPY outflows. That's going to increase the value of debits on the NPY account, money that is leaving Australia. And then as a result, we could see a higher NPY deficit and then a higher current account deficit or a worsening of the current account deficit. And then you could think about the flip side, what would happen if global interest rates fell? And then you could just follow that same process to see what would then happen for the NPY deficit and the current account deficit. But that's how changes in global interest rates really affect the NPY account and the balance on the current account. So our last cyclical factor that affects the NPY account are changes in the domestic business cycle, which reflect domestic economic growth. So let's see what we're talking about here. And before we start, there's an important principle you need to know. So the principle to start with here is this idea, well, not so idea, but a reality, is that many shares on the Australian Securities Exchange, which is the, which is the Australian share market, are actually foreign owned. So this means that if company profits increase, and we can talk about this occurring in Australia, if Australian company profits increase, well then those companies are going to have to pay out a high level of dividends to their shareholders uh, in theory. And then because so many shares are foreign owned, these dividend payments will go to foreign shareholders. So they will, that that money will leave Australia, that that will be an NPY debit of those income flows leaving Australia. So let's then see how we can put this all together. The first step is we've got an increase in Australia's economic growth, which leads to higher company profits. So we see a higher value of dividends, this should be an S, I took a shortcut, to shareholders. And because of this relationship, that so many shares of foreign owned, increasing the value of dividend payments going overseas, increased in NPY outflows, which are the debits, which will then increase the NPY deficit, so outflows exceeding inflows, which will then worsen the current account deficit. So the example we've given here is that what happens if Australian economic growth improves? That's actually going to worsen the current account deficit in theory. The flip situation for you to try would be to think about, okay, what happens if there is a reduction in Australia's economic growth? 
how is that going to affect company profits, NPY outflows, and the current account deficit? All right, that's for you to try.